Hello everyone, apologies for the way I sound, I am sick and tired, and uh, etc. Someone on this call got me sick. I'm gonna name no names. No one is going to indicate at all who did it. It's going to be a mystery for the ages. Anyway, basically... You ready what you're talking about? <laughs> Basically, this is the new format for Bexy Critique that we're experimenting with because we live a little bit far apart from each other. So, in order to do these more often, uh, Teddy came up with, I believe it was Teddy came up with this idea about doing these, these over Discord. And I think it's a fantastic idea. So, you know, this is our experimental first go. And then... Uh, if people like it, we'll continue on. So if there's any snafus, anything messes up, whatever, please, teething problems. We already had a rather interesting teething problem, which is rather embarrassing. So I'm not going to go into details. That would be unfair. <laughs> but uh, the film we watched was Saving Sally. It's a Filipino film from 2016. Um, and the, the reason I wanted to do Saving Sally first because the makers of it are currently working on a new adaptation of the comic book of Jaja Zaturna. I'm being special. I'm specifying it's a remake of it's it's a adaptation of the comic, not a remake of the original film. Because Jaja Zaturna, it's I I don't think it's going to be musical because the musical parts were nothing to do with the comic. That was from the Jaja Zaturna stage show, so totally different. So it's not a remake of the film. Um, so they're doing that. And I'd already seen about their Kickstarter, because, you know, they have a Kickstarter. And by the time this goes live on YouTube, chances are it's going to be a couple of days left. So, if you... We have a cat coming in. And I'm professional background. No, someone's wrestling a wheelie then in the back alley. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Um, where was I? The... Anyway, um... The Kickstarter should be a couple of days, you know, left if you see this right when it goes up. Um, I've donated uh, like $100 to it, which gives me all sorts of uh, rewards, including a copy, a PDF copy of the original Jaja Zatura comic book. Hopefully translated into English, uh, but, you know, there's no guarantee. <laughs> but uh, also, um, I get, I believe I get a villager based on me, and I get to write some graffiti for the for background of a shot so you know i'm gonna write all hail the lecher bitch or diamanda hagen says hail me something like that something you know to advertise the show uh, which means that if i ever review the new version of the tour and i can get all meta and stuff it'll be great <laughs> i have no idea if they'll accept me with the makeup on i doubt it so uh i'll probably just send a, a, a regular picture i'll probably t i'll choose one from like 15 years ago and so I'll look much hotter in the animated form than I do in real life. It'll be great. Anyway, um, the the Twitter account for saving for the company basically messaged me on Twitter saying, "We saw you did this review of Jazz of the Tour, and we're working a new one." And and I was like, "I already knew about this, and, and you know, thank you for reminding me." Blah 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 blah, and I retweeted it and stuff. And so as a thank you, they sent me a link to Saving Sally and suggested that I, you know. You know, take a look at it and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm going to do a backseat critique of this and possibly add it to the review review, uh, review pile. I don't think I'm going to review it, but I could. But so we watched it for backseat critique. That's a very convoluted story. But Saving Sally is a story. You got two. You got two teenagers, two 17 year olds in. It's either Manila or it's one of the other big cities in, in the Philippines. Uh, the The main character is the guy who is he's obsessed with with comics and stuff, and he wants to he wants to be a comic drawer. And she and she is uh, she wants to be an inventor of various kinds. She also wants to go to art stuff, but she also invents stuff. And she's uh, gotten a, she's have she's in an abusive home. He's in love with her. She, uh, and it's an unrequited love type thing. And she ends up with an older guy who um, is a dickhead. And then uh, all kinds of things happen. And there is a certain amount of parallels with the Kevin Smith film Chasing Amy. 
involving real life being turned into a comic book, which does really well in universe and, you know, romance and drama, uh, all to do with that. If you've seen Chasing Amy, that kind of thing, like a cisset Chasing Amy. Have I synopsized it well enough? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll cool. talk about it more. Well, from now on, <laughs> from now on, there are going to be spoilers. If you'd ra- rather watch the film, uh, I believe I was told there was a copy on Amazon. I haven't checked. Uh, I they might have assumed I was American, so maybe it's just Amazon. Dot, you know, dot, dot in America. I don't know. Uh, there is also a DVD copy out there. I found. I, I looked it up and I found it would cost like eighteen pounds. You know in the uk uh not it's not out in region two it has to be imported from somewhere so it does exist out there and depending on where you are it might be expensive might not be anyway the visuals in this film are spectacular there is definitely the plot in my opinion the the plot is for big chunks of it it's very very obvious what's going on um and what's going to happen next. Not all of it, but, you know, big chunks of it. But so they put all of their creativity into the visuals, and they are spectacular. But someone else should talk oh. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me talk about the visuals. Um, the backgrounds are amazing. Um, the style of the characters themselves, not the main characters, the main characters are live action. Um, but the background characters that are monsters, not so keen on their style, but I get what they're for. But the backgrounds themselves are amazing. There's so much detail put into them. Little touches left, right, and center. Um, beyond that, they've even got little flourishes of what's happening, characters doing things that so much care that isn't normal in an animated work, whether it be if it's hybrid approach or not. Um, Nicola, you had a, a, an example you mentioned earlier about the locker. Oh, yeah. Um, it's never quiet in the background. Normally, we should also clarify, this is a mixture of live action and comic book style animation and some uh, CGI. Blends seamlessly. It's Very, really it's, well done. It's sometimes hard mm-hmm. to tell exactly what is what and uh that's really good yeah it blends absolutely seamlessly it makes the scenes nice and smooth but there's nothing still in the background usually when you have an animated short there or anything like that stuff in the background is static with just the occasional move of the head or move just to signify action there was a scene where the main character is walking up to try and get her attention keeps hesitating walking away in the background of the shot, just slightly blurred and out of focus because it is in the background, there's a couple of animated characters just dicking around and playing with a fo- like full on animated playing with a football. And you get that a lot where you'll have a just a background character who's not even anywhere near the focus of the frame, just being animated and doing stuff. Like someone cleaning off a table in a restaurant, there's another one where the kid is just like digging in their locker and dropping something. Just the organic movement of the animations just makes you forget that they are animations. <laughs> and the, uh, the animated style is very, it reminds me of Adventure Time quite a lot, or the really odd comparison. It also reminds me of... I lean more towards the amazing world of Gumball. That could well be. Also yeah. uh, Monkey Dust in certain areas. Which you one? claim I have seen that, but I was looking that up during the film, and I have no recollection. For the <laughs> audience, I definitely made you watch bits of it. For the <laughs> audience, Monkey Dust is an early late nineties, early two thousands British animated comedy series. It is incredibly dark. It is like one of the darkest sketch comedy shows ever made. It's like it's a, between it and Jam. You cannot get darker. No recollection of it whatsoever. <laughs> hmm. But one of the main things I really liked about the visuals as well 
it's very obvious that the show is being told from the perspective of the main character who is the comic book artist because everything is in a comic book style. And this comes across to the older boyfriend, 28-year-old, dating a 17-year-old. Yeah. Fuck. The, the dickhead. Um, oh, yeah. There are times where he is played by an actual human actor, and then whenever he starts being, like, kind of creepy and underhanded, he switches to an animated monster, and it will swap several times within a scene, and you'll just not pick up on it. It's really well done. Yeah. Like, there are times when it's the... Him and his... Is the, the gear lead interacting with him. He's human. And it's just him. But the gear's distracted. And it's just him and the main character interacting. He's the monster. And it'll swip around. It's... Oh, it was really well done. Yeah. I mean, and beyond that, it'll also swap his uh, design based on his actions. He's being perceived as a good person. He appears as a human, turns as a monster whenever he's not. This also applies to other characters. Most of the background characters are reflected as monsters, which is a reflection of the main character's perception on people. But people like his parents are always viewed as people. Um, and uh, basically people will swap between these uh, monster and non-monster. Yeah. Um, Received by the main character. Very nice. I just had a thought. There is one scene in this entire film, excepting where it's just the two main characters interacting, where there are no monster characters in the background. The Scale Championship. That's because it wasn't an evil person. How can you be yeah. evil playing Skyletrick? Oh yeah, the, the his dad takes him to cheer him up, and he takes him to the place where men go to deal with their feelings. It's a big, massive. Scale electric turn out just a room full of men racing cars. They, 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 set, it up, they set it up. They set it up to make you assume that it's a strip club, and they even shoot the guys, you know, reacting as though it's a strip club. It's spectacularly done, and then they reveal it's the it's the toy cars. It's like oh, fantastic. <laughs> There's not a single piece of animation in that scene. Now that I think about it. <laughs> the one thing this uh, I, one thing during some parts of it. Uh, it wasn't quite so obvious how uh, what was going to happen next, and I even because when it got into that kind of area, um, I did wonder if they're going to play with the unreliable narrator trope. They ultimately didn't, which makes it a bit more simple simplified. But it it was spectacular. Um, all the imagination in the world went into the the visuals and. Even like the moving from one scene to another, just spectacular. Like, give you an example. Um, the the boy he's got uh, his bedroom is just on the walls. He's got a bunch of co of comic. His drawings are all over the walls, and he's have. There's a scene where he's in there in his bedroom, and the wa the room disappears, and it's just a black void. But the pictures remain, and they sort of float around. It's in this black void, very very um, expressionistic sort of uh, German Expressionism type thing. It's very similar, weirdly enough, to what um, Francis Ford Coppola wanted to do with Bram Stoker's Dracula. His original intention was to have almost no sets and have the, and have the sets be the costumes. So the costumes would be the sets. This is why Bram Stoker's Dracula has such over-the-top costuming. Because that was the, what he was going for, but then the studio were like, that's fucking nuts! And he's like, oh... I'm going to open a vineyard. <laughs> there is something good, too. Um, we've talked a lot about the visuals, but I want to talk about the sound. Never in that movie at all did the music overbear the scene. In fact, there's a lot of scenes where there is no music. It's just background ambience. But they also like to add in... Uh, the term... Not fully. No, where they will add in sounds to match certain movements. Like the few times the characters are turning, it'll make a swish noise. Or there's a time where he stands up and clenches his fist and you hear like little knuckle cracks. There's a lot of cartoon-esque but subtle sound effects like that, which really bring you into the scene. And you're going to come into my arms, you're just going to sit there and show your butt to the internet. 
One thing I wanted to mention in regards to sound was oh, yeah, language. Sure. Um, I did appreciate the fact that the film was in English, um, but they still had native language in it. Um, I go up. Um, and, they, well, and that also played into the characters and their, um, their feelings. So it would come in whenever they were particularly angry or unhappy uh, or happy. Um, so it's like high emotion equaled use natural language, which is something I'm sure would be quite uh, familiar to someone who speaks a second language. Yeah, and his mum uses it to comfort him as well when he's kind of heartbroken. Which is, yeah, his mum is adorable. I love his mum. Yeah. She's mom... only in a few scenes, but she's just brilliant at them. I think his mum might have been one of the villagers in Jaisha the Tourna, the one who went and got her, her hair done at Ada's uh, salon. I could be wrong, but I think I she think was. Might be right. So who knows? But the uh, the the use of Tagalog also could be uh, the kids. The ones who tend to use it most heavily seem to be the younger people. So it could be a generational thing, or possibly uh, they could be trying to use it that they're using it all. They could be another element of the uh, the you know the idea of secret languages that are being used by, by certain characters because there's a tiny touch on that involving involving laundry of all things. Uh, I am um, <laughs> Not my fault! Blame my baby niece! <laughs> <laughs> I went to London to visit my brother and my little baby niece and she had sniffles. And then I got sniffles. And then apparently it's a plague to her! Sniffles! Apparently uh, treating me much worse <laughs> than it <laughs> than it <laughs> did your <laughs> Oh my god. There are sweeping passages of time in this film as well. Yeah. Like the last half hour or so, like a good chunk of the film, it's implied that it's over their summer break, which is pretty short, I think, in the Philippines. Like it's over... that whole thing is like spanned over a month. And then the last half hour is implied to have happened over the course of their uh their degree. Well near up to the end of the degree, so it's like several years where they're apart. And it's kind of like a blink and you'll miss it, the time passage. Yeah. They don't make an effort to change the characters to make it look like the age. Yeah, the... Yeah, could have done something with their hair, at least. Yeah. I thought they made the guy's hair longer. Yeah, they did. The, that was about it. The guy's hair was longer. Yeah. That, that's... It's, it's still not... It's nowhere near enough. If it's, a, you know, starting off at 17, it's meant to be like three or four years later, he's in his 20s. They should have at least given, like, a fake beard. And to be fair, they did also lose a lot of footage when they were making it. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever the credits were going up, I noticed that there was a line. They were working on this for about 10 years. Hard drives uh, were de were corrupted. Footage was lost. Tears were shed. And that is actually at the end of the credits. And it makes you wonder, with the sheer amount of animation in this, to lose a hard drive... Oh my god, that must have been years of work. Yeah. That would be heartbreaking. And it's not... I remember when I lost a hard drive when I was doing... Back when I was doing YouTube for a little while, and I lost so many videos. Luckily, the stuff I'd already uploaded, but I would have been heartbroken before I'd uploaded those. <laughs> One thing I noticed... Um... Yeah. I believe this is the third Filipino film I've seen. This is the first one that doesn't have gay zombies in it. I'm not that you know of. Yeah, yeah, that I know of, yeah. And I'm not saying that means the film is bad, because it's not bad, but, you know, I'm just, I'm noting that no gay zombies. But, you know, the next film, uh, Jesus of the Trimmer, should have, should have at least one gay zombie. So, you know, that's a good redemption well, you arc. Know, her strict parents are probably training her to be a gay zombie hunter. <laughs> that's why they're so strict with her. Yeah, that, that's the background story that we just didn't hear about. But, I mean, we've spent this uh, video about 20 minutes so far talking and gushing positively about the film. We should probably talk about any negative. Uh... Um, because everything was from the kid's point of view, uh, occasionally it was a little bit muddy about what exactly was going on, like the passage of time thing. Just other things like that, the uh, bit where it, see it seemed like they were maybe going for the unreliable narrator, but they didn't. 
But in order to get round this, they would have had to bring in some form of objective reality so that you ha you can compare that to the, the rest of the film, which is from his point of view. But that would change the film completely. Plus, what with all the hard drives gone and stuff like that, they may well have done stuff like that. So it's it's not a cripplingly bad problem, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I would agree. Um, from my own perspective, the one thing that comes to mind is the danger on the um, main characters and how that love story comes to fruition. Um, the fact that we have the relationship forming after the main male character becomes successful. So we have a situation where we have, he gets friend zoned, he becomes successful and suddenly they get together, which could potentially send a bad message about her and why she's with him. That's not in the text, but that could be read as subtext, which is detracts from the message of the film. Well, exactly that successful, and he had been in that status for like it's implied two or three years before she comes back to him, and she does make him that nice little. The, the reintroduction is quite literally her getting his autograph with jokes about him being famous and selling it on. It's clearly he's he's There's actually an implied time skip of like two years between that as well. Another problem is she, um, her parent. You know, she's got her abusive parents who don't let her out of the house, and you know, uh, won't let her have a partner and stuff like that. And then she, after the time jump, she she's had another boyfriend, and then, uh, then he goes and rescues her from the house, and you know, she so she escapes. So she. I'd assumed that she'd run off from her parents, like moved out, and that's why she had freedom. But then we discover that no, she's back with them, and they're beating her up again. I I wonder if things had to be moved around because they lost some stuff, and so that was meant the scene of the, of of the main character helping her escape the, her parents' house. Um, if that was meant to be earlier on, like that was meant to start off the third, you know, third act or something. Entirely possible, and that would actually be then that wouldn't quite... give them a reason to go their separate ways at that point. Of course, no, I would. Yes, like, um, if say that scene plotted in just before the scene in his room where she unveils the wall, so they have that positive feeling where he rescues her and then um, discovers that wall that then causes the rift. Yeah, that would fit. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, I, I've got some notes here. One of them is Speed Hard 3, an amazing parody of Hollywood titles. Because they go to see a big action yeah, film that's, called Speed. That's the we need. Yeah, Speed Hard. <laughs> and then you see clips from Speed Hard 3, and it is basically a micro budget uh, film, clearly filmed with like, some film students or something. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what right. much else there is to say without any real big spoilers at this stage. Yeah. Other than I would really recommend you see this film. It's not all films that Zara forces me to watch. I enjoy and recommend. There we go. In my defense, I I had not seen this film, and it was I was sent it. So you know, it's not my fault that you enjoyed it. Yeah, hundred percent. It was a good film. I enjoyed it as well, um, which is a rarity whenever Zar encourages us to watch a film. Yeah, and just so um, you audience know, they're in the same room. Yeah, we're gonna ruin the illusion now. Oh no! <laughs> considering <laughs> considering the lighting difference, in the same room. He's in the same blue yeti. This is why. Yeah. This is why the green. Think the whenever um, Teddy pl talks, that's why it goes up green around Jernus. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise we'd have an unbearable echo. And uh, I am uh, far away in my editing room. This is the Mac I edit on. 
Dun, dun, dun. What are you impressed. doing? No! Behind the scenes stuff is for the Patreon people. Oh, well. Speaking of Patreon, Patreon members have access to our Discord, and in the future, we'll be able to view live. Yeah, we're 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 hoping to bring in and give Discord members uh, the ability to, to watch Jesus these live and to chat about it and to write balls, 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 balls if they want. And you know, if they have anything interesting, we can you know we can let them lead the conversation if they want. You know that kind of thing. I think it'd be really fun because not many people have you know taken up on the Discord. But if you're a patron. Join in the Discord. It's it's it, it it's fun. I'm sorry, I'm very sick. Yeah, no, it's yeah. great, and we'll be doing more. We'll be doing some watch alongs and stuff like that. So, so keep an eye and uh, sign up and join if you haven't already. Yeah, this initial one has been pretty much an experiment with us. So, let us know what you think of the new format. If we can get this up and running, if it looks good, if you guys like it, we'll be able to put out a lot more because we no longer have to be in the same room. Yeah. Which is difficult because someone decided to move abroad. Technically. <laughs> and and interestingly, we've been able to get other people involved, like Robin the Minion is has been is up for it i'm pretty sure i can ask some people interesting people to be in it like i know darren mooney from uh second wind pretty sure i can probably convince film in ashens to join in hell we might be able to watch a film by like a, a low budget director that i've made the acquaintance and you know get them in the in to chat about it that would be interesting i know a number of them That'd be cool. you know i might even be able to convince cory taylor to get involved that would be hilarious i haven't chatted with him in a couple that of years would yeah be awesome <laughs> oh yeah, we should wrap this up. Yeah. So I recommend the film. Please let us know what you think of this new format. Um we'll do the whole be sure to like, subscribe if you're already not. Hit the little bell, because every time you hit the little bell, Minion Cat gets a p even though she's just out the window. <laughs> <laughs> uh if you want, you can share this with your friends. If they're not interested. Duct tape them to a chair, force them to watch it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's the way. That was the way to do it. And you know, if you enjoyed the video and you're not you're not subscribed, you know, please do, but you don't need to. Even if you just watch and that's all you do, thank you so much for the view. And if you want to if you want to join the patron, there's all kinds of rewards and we're working on new rewards coming out. All kinds of interesting and exciting ones. So watch this space for that. Dun dun dun. We'll let you know whenever we finalize everything. We're yeah. still working on it. Okay, well chat to you all next time. Oh wait, 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 before we go. Oh. Uh after I finish talking here, I'm gonna insert uh either part of or maybe the whole of the trailer for the animated Jaja the Tourna and I'm going to put a link at the bottom to uh, to their Kickstarter. If you're watching this right when it goes live, chances are you've got a couple of days left. I really suggest, you know, put it, give them a couple of quid. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, like, I, based on this, it's probably going to be fantastic. And although i got to say, I'm not entirely sure how Jaja herself is going to work in their animation style because... If she's gonna animate Jaja the Tourna, I strongly feel she should be in the Franz Franzetta style. Uh, the be, the most famous example of that uh, to our generation of pop culture would be the original Shira, that kind of art, which this definitely isn't. But you know, however they do it, I'm sure it'll be f fascinating, and I look forward to it. Well, we'll see how the styles change. This was very comic book esque because the main character was a comic book artist. Yeah. Maybe they'll go for a different style. Yeah. Report it. Alright then. See you later. Bye guys. Bye bye. My name is Ada. I'm gay. Take a good look at yourself. You wake up in the morning, open up the shop, work. Your life is so boring. 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 My life might not be too exciting.
At least I'm not hurting anybody. Where did this come from? Zaborna? I'm a girl. I'm a girl. No! I'm a full blooded girl! Hi! Isn't she the prettiest thing? I'm not too sure about this. Ada, this is called destiny. The universe chose you so you can save the world. I'm not a superhero. I'm not a girl. And I'm certainly not wearing these rags. All your future customers are gonna die if you don't do anything. You can fly and you've got super strength. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>